Committee will come to order. Good morning and thank you for being here. The Trouble Asset Relief Program, known as TARP, has evolved into a program of unprecedented scope, scale, and complexity. TARP funds are being used in connection with 12 separate programs, under which Treasury has already committed $643 billion and spent $441 billion. Today we will hear from the Special Inspector General for TARP, Neil Borowski. As he presents his quarterly report to Congress, his findings, quite frankly, are astonishing. According to the IG, the TARP has become a program in which taxpayers, number one, are not being told that TARP recipients are doing what TARP recipients are doing with their money. Number two, have not been told what their investments are worth. And number three, will not be told the full details of how their money is being invested. He found that even though Treasury receives monthly reports on the value of TARP investments, it will not make that information public. Incredibly, the Treasury Department has taken the position that it will not even ask TARP recipients what they are doing with the taxpayers' money. In short, the taxpayers now have a $700 billion spending program that's being run under the philosophy of don't ask, don't tell. However, the committee has been asking a lot of questions about last fall's financial meltdown and its consequences. And the key question is this, are these programs being run for the benefit of the American taxpayers who are funding them or for the benefit of Wall Street? That's a question. Without more transparency in these programs, we cannot answer that question for sure, but what we have learned from the IG is not encouraging. Treasury has hired nine private firms to be asset managers for the public-private investment program. All of these large firms are engaged in extensive private investment activities. According to the special IG, this arrangement is vulnerable to conflicts of interest, collusion, and money laundering. Yet Treasury is allowing these firms to share information between employees who make investment decisions on behalf of the government and those who manage private funds. This arrangement is further indication that federal financial regulation is a bit too cozy with Wall Street. Meanwhile, lending to American businesses and consumers remain weak. Some firms claim to have used top funds to increase lending, but others have used it to acquire other businesses or show up their own balance sheets and then award bonuses to employees. There is no evidence that Treasury has made any attempt to determine whether TARP funding has resulted in increased lending and whether that has had any effect on reducing unemployment. I also want to voice my deep concern over recent news that Treasury has requested a legal opinion from the Department of Justice challenging the Special Inspector General's independence. Congress would not have established a Special Inspector General to oversee the TARP if all we wanted was a yes man or yes woman that Treasury could ignore. It is critical that oversight investigations and audits of TARP remains unencumbered. Congress may have given Treasury some leeway when it comes to the TARP, but we didn't give them a blank check. The problem is we can't even say whether the top programs are working or not because the information that would allow Congress and the taxpayers to analyze whether they are getting a good return on their investments has not been made available. I hope today's hearing and the special IG's report will be a wake-up call to the Treasury and the Fed that our financial system cannot be run behind closed doors. Again, I want to thank Mr. Borowski for appearing today, and I look forward to his testimony. At this time, I yield time to the ranking member from the great state of California, Congressman Issa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you again for this vigorous oversight. As you have said so often, all we ask for is transparency. 
Today we'll hear that all we're not getting is transparency. Mr. Chairman, uh, because I'm going to include them in my opening statement, I'd like to ask unanimous consent that three pieces be put in the record. The first, Mr. Chairman, is your letter to Tim Geithner asking that, uh, that he uh, in specifically include the recommendations of the special IG, something which I'm not sure there's an answer, but I, it's from February 5th. The second is yesterday's New York, I guess today's New York Times, that says, big estimate worth little on bailout. I suspect that that will be referred to many times today. And the third, because it is related to TARP, and to a case recently settled against the government, I have a letter in response to a letter from myself in which the chairman's been copied from uh, Maurice Hank Greenberg concerning, considering, concerning his continued willingness to arbitrate rather than to litigate uh, the disputes which so far he's been winning. That objection is so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today we're going to hear about a $23.7 trillion figure related to the TARP. Additionally, we're going to hear that the full transparency which we asked for, which this president and this administration has promised, is being blocked by the bureaucracy that often seems to say, just trust us and we will deliver. Now, just trust us and we will deliver, quite frankly, and I'm not making the comparison except for the purpose uh, of people understanding why we can't trust, Bernie Madoff said, trust us, we have high returns. The fact is, Treasury is saying, trust us, you really don't have $23.7 trillion at risk. As a matter of fact, effectively they're saying the only thing that's at risk is a fraction of the $700 billion that we've committed. Mr. Chairman, nothing could be further from the truth. Over my decades in business, one thing I learned was insurance policies cost money because the amount insured is in fact at risk. Anyone who thinks that we mark to market assets to half of their original value uh, with some regularity when they include toxic assets and written down homes and then believes that there would be no risk in guaranteeing those, particularly Freddie and Fannie and other guarantees that are out there, is simply living in a dream world. If we underwrite in various forms over $23 trillion, we will in fact have losses. There are no gains for all practical purposes in these assurances, so they're not offset by profits. In the case of the TARP directly, and I know we're going to hear from the Special IG today, there will be some good news. There already has been some return and some profit on monies extended in the TARP. That is not so of our many of our guarantees. Most of our guarantees are, in fact, insurance without cost to both profit and non-profit organizations. Mr. Chairman, I believe that this administration desperately wants the kinds of transparency that will allow us to uncover potential insider trading, cozy relationships be between part of a, uh, a trading organization which is trading for the government and part which is trading for itself. And I believe only through our vigorous oversight will this administration be able to create the kind of a sandwich where on one side is the president asking for transparency, on the other side is the Congress demanding it, and in the middle is the IG trying to overcome a bureaucracy that has always been able to outlast administrations and chairmanships. Mr. Chairman, today we have to let make sure that this special IG goes back with the clear message Congress will not be outlasted and our patience is running out for the transparency promised by the administration, promised by the Congress, and not yet delivered by the people who transcend administrations one after another. Mr. Chairman, I look forward to the testimony of the Special IG and I commend you for continuing this vigorous oversight and yield back the balance of my time. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen.